Oh hey guys, what's good, what's happening, and what's going on? Today's video, well last night I got a little bit creative with the printing. Found this really neat program called Onshape, which uh, it's a web-based CAD for you 3D printers out there. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but you can do a lot more on that than you can in Tinkercad. Tinkercad's great if you want to get into building mock circuitry as well as doing 3D modeling. Um, it's kind of limited. You basically just drop shapes and then mold the shapes. However, Onshape is more like Fusion 360, so you can do stuff like draw your shapes, extrude them to get different concepts and ideas, really nice. Um, so I went ahead and decided to duplicate one of the lures I have in my tablet box called a ripping rack and this is what I came up with so it took me a while to 3d print it I first tried to print it like this and it fell over and then the AI system and the printer stopped and went print job failed uh, second time I printed it I tried putting a wider raft on the bottom hoping that would work but it keeps break kept breaking off at the tail third time I printed it I put a support in the front with it upright but something went whack and it knocked the print job off so no bueno fourth time I printed it I printed it like this oriented and I put a support in the back here and you can tell because you can see scuffing on the black PLA. Now I printed it in black because I'm completely out of white and silver or white and gray. Uh, halfway through a print job for my dad actually. The legs on the bottom of his couch are failing. Well they're nylon they're old they're crusted and they're breaking from the weight so i printed some out of pla and we tried um, a prototype out on his chair and it's working great however mid printing these 16 uh, casters i ran out of gray pla and i discovered what the printer does when it runs out of pla is it'll pause the printing and then take you through the steps to load in new pla now that printer is so much easier to handle than the ender when it comes to stuff like that so that made the life a lot easier so I printed up 16 of these, but as you can see, they're silver and black. However, the way these bolt to the couch is there's a recess in there. The bolt goes in there. This goes, this part here goes on the couch. This part here sits on the floor. The old ones, the vinyl ones, the nylon ones, nylon, yes, not vinyl. Um, there was a gap in the middle here and dad and I couldn't figure out why. So when I made these, I made it solid, printed them with 100% infill. Like I said, we tested it out on his chair and I told him, I said, don't be, don't be gentle. Like just treat it like you would with the stock nylons. You know, if you plop down in it, plop down in it. If you do anything, like basically I want to see if it's going to hold up. And if it doesn't hold up, then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to modify. I'm like, I, like I told him, I so with 3D printing, it's all about prototyping. You make your first print, you try it out. Ah, oh, that's not right. I wish it had this, that, this, that. Well, then you modify your CAD or your 3D design. We call it whatever, your model. Print a, print a version two, print a version three, print a version four until you get it the way you want it. I love 3D printing. That might be my new winter video source. Sorry for those who are looking for fishing content, but I don't know what the heck it's going to do this winter. It's currently February... Oh. Crazy British bloke is calling me. I'll be back. Alrighty guys, I have no idea what I was uh, talking about prior because I never reviewed the footage because I'm like that. But anyway, I uh, just talked to bloke. Uh, he bought a new rod, but you already know that because this video is coming out. It's filmed in the past, but coming out in the future. I guess I'm a time traveler. I, I don't, I don't know. But anyway, so I printed this guy up. It's got some BBs in it, so it has a nice rattle to it pretty sweet but it definitely needs a paint job because a black bait like this will not do much now back in the day i used to just take some wire like this stuff here i'd take a strand off and put it in my drill and then twist eyelets for it problem with that is is this stuff here is really bendable even when you when you twist it it's still the eye is bendable i need spring steel to do this right but i don't have any and i check the shops around here like home depot home hardware all these other stores canadian tire i could couldn't find spring steel anywhere so I thought maybe I would try this screw eyes from Home Depot they're half inch I don't know if this is gonna work but I figured we'll give it a go and to really seat them in there like I'm not sure if that's gonna be too much coming off the bait I can't even find the hole on the top I'm just gonna temporarily install it I did buy some super glue to make sure it doesn't come out 
We got some uh, Gorilla Super Glue here. This isn't that gel shit, is it? Okay, good. So that's not too bad for a hook eye. That'll probably do pretty well. I'm gonna install the hook eye because we need to go out to the garage and and I have my airbrush kit out there. So I figured why not go out there and paint it? Um, but yeah, Bloke bought that new rod. He bought a Lunker Hunt, medium heavy, very fast or extremely fast action bait caster. He had a coupon code from Lunker Hunt because he bought a bunch of baits and you know how Lunker Hunt, they like to put uh, extra stuff in with the baits. Why can't I open this? It says to push. So yeah, this morning I went out, uh, it's Saturday morning. If anybody's wondering why I didn't do a stream last night, it's because I had to be up at 7 a.m. to be at the tire shop for 8 a.m. to get the tire fixed on the truck. And guys, I was right. Um, the issue with the truck tire was that wheel weight. So I had them, um, screw this through, good to go, cool. I had them, they pulled the wheel weight, cleaned it up, installed a new wheel weight. We'll see how well this holds out because not this weekend, but next weekend is when I head down and film the video that you've already seen. But that's not too bad. That's your line tie. So you'd hook it up from here and it to the water. I'm gonna go ahead and attach these and then we're gonna go out to the garage and uh, start 3D, no, start painting this guy up. What paint job? I have no freaking idea. I might do Fire Tiger. I might do, I don't know. We'll go out to the garage and figure it out. Something else I 3D printed was this. What is this? Well, right now I can open and close my, my closet door, right? Problem is, is so can scampers. And I get annoyed because she'll get in there and then get behind my dresser and hide and won't come out. So what this is, is you bring it down. Now you can't open the doors. She can't open the doors. Problem solved. Because somebody likes to be the hide and seek champion of the world. Bloke just sent me a message. He's like, what do you think about these for carp? And he found those proficiency uh, tiny little spin casters i was gonna do a video on those but then i saw that every single angling youtuber out there already beat me to it I wasn't about to dump 50 bucks on a friggin rod and reel they're like 30 bucks in the u.s but we get hosed oh man it rained or is it still raining i don't know so yeah i went and got the tire fixed today which was needed i'll show you here the new wheel weight on it wherever the hell it is Oh, it's the same old wheel weight. Never mind. But there was like a piece of shit coming out the side. So they just cleaned it and reattached it. We'll see if it holds air. I got a good week before I head down to uh, London. So, but when I left the tire shop, originally I bought that reel, right? This um, reel here. And I put it on the Okuma rod and I took the uh, whopper plopper out to test it out. Now the action's great on the plop but this rod guys i found out it's meant for steelhead and salmon and i'm going to show you the tip of it because it's kind of whack so like i said bloke found this in the bin and the t the end was broken off so he basically did like this this repair job on it so it's got no give on the end uh it's like fishing with a tree trunk so to cast out the lure it was kind of a pain in the ass so i was like yeah i can't really use this it's like eight foot six it's supposed to be a nine foot rod i believe yeah it's a 902 so it's a nine foot rod but four inches was cut off or yeah, whatever yeah i think four inches was cut off the end maybe a bit more six inches and it's got no action a pain in the ass but let me tell you this plopper worked out great i actually uh caught a bass on it last night when i tested it out of course no camera no cell phone i was so excited after work that i just ran out and got her done so i went to canadian tire today and i figured you know we got a Daiwa rod or Daiwa reel got a Daiwa rod so i got this air dex um it's a medium it says medium heavy on it it's supposed to be a medium seven foot one quarter to one ounce 10 to 20 pound line we're putting 30 pound line on it i figured this here would be a better pair up for that for that reel so i'm going to strip that off now and then we're going to hook up the uh, we're going to put it on that i'm going to keep this probably for catfishing because it'll be fine for catfishing so i'm not going to load a bait on that rod yet because it's going to get this crankbait however i won't be able to test it today because the weather is rather sporadic and i'm also waiting for a couple things from amazon to come in um to finalize this bait that i'm printing and painting and all that fun stuff yeah bloke liked my idea of having all the rods hanging above the uh, garage that he did the same thing in his basement all right i need to set up my bait station i need to clear off some spot i'm gonna do that now Alrighty guys, I seem to be having some problems with the airbrush, but I had a spray bomb of chrome, so I hit it with the chrome and that's when I realized the hook end and the air send split the bait. Not a big deal. When I get my UV resin, it'll seal it and it should be fine. But I decided to start with a base coat of chrome. I'm going to hit it again once it dries, just to uh, 
really make it shiny. And the UV resin is going to make, make it glossy too. So this will be my base coat. But yeah, I have nothing but problems with this airbrush. I guess the last time I used it, I was so excited to go fishing that I forgot to clear it. And now it's gooped. So there's no flow. So I've been messing around with that for the past forever. And I bought crazy glue today. And I totally have crazy glue right here. So good job, Skivens. Alrighty, guys. Well... That thing is plugged. I got the needle moving finally, but there's still some issues with it. Number one, I tried to remove the needle, so you have to take this tiny little nut off the front. Problem with that is, is I don't have the tool for it anymore. Who the frig knows where that ended up? So that's a bit of an issue. And the galleys where the paint passes through are currently plugged. So airbrushing will not be happening today. However, I do have it print, uh, painted with some nice chrome. And don't worry about the back end there. What I'm going to do is I got some UV uh, straight out of China, UV epoxy coming in. So you can basically set it, balance it, and then hit it with a UV light to dry it. And it dries pretty quick. The UV index outside today is not the greatest for that. So I might pick this up tomorrow and start playing around with it because who knows when that uv resin is going to show up and tomorrow um i ordered some eyeballs for attaching to baits they're uh they're actually really cheap they're not dead meat customs or anything like that they're just generic eyes for lure making so i'll attach some eyeballs on there while i was working away look what i found the old mark one that i did back in what 2021 the wooden bait i actually caught a walleye on this Got one. Well, guys, it's official. Walleye, like homemade baits made out of wood. It's official. Yay. Bye, buddy. Surprisingly enough, the idiot was dumb enough to eat it. So, kudos. Yeah, red belly, white side, black top, stick on eyeballs. And the shittiest paint job you ever did see, but it was good enough to confuse a fish. So, that's probably cool. So I'm going to have to wait until that UV resin comes in. Then we'll come back out here and we'll uh, see what we can do. But now it's a waiting game. Freaking hate waiting games. They annoy me. Yeah, waiting is for the weekend. I want it now. Oh, hey, look at it out there now. Super sunny. Yeah, I said it was supposed to rain up until about... 2 o'clock, it's currently 1.40. The weather dick is pretty accurate today. Go team weather dick. I'll never say that again. Anywho, I was just notified my package should be here, and it is. So, we can go back out into the garage now, and maybe apply that first coat. Even though I don't have the eyeballs, I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to leave that bait chrome, because why not? That looks pretty dope. I just want to put some eyeballs on it, of some fashion. I don't know what I'm going to put on it. We're going to throw something on it. Maybe I might just do like I did with the uh, Mark 1 here. And just use those red beads and put a black dot on it. Might be enough to get the job did. The bait's split. I think I want to make one a little bit bigger. Maybe go up to 130%. But let's crack into this box and see what we got in here. It should just be the uh, resin. Now this is the same shit my favorite bait maker on YouTube, Marling Baits, uses. I unfortunately do not have the same shit he does. Um, by that I mean he has this like UV light on a spinner thing. And So what I got in here is a box of UV resin. So the way this stuff is, is it's liquid until it gets hit by sunlight and or a UV flashlight, which I have one of those right here in my pocket. Black light. This kit comes with your nozzle tops. I guess a silicone measuring cup. Guys, this is actually intended for making jewelry, not for making lures. Um, just saw that Marling Bates was using it and it's really good. It works well. Here's a user manual for how to use it. I guess women can actually use this as a top coat for drying their nails because look, it even says on here that you can use a nail dryer. Use transparent or translucent mold. Make sure molds and tools are clean before use. Well, I don't plan on doing any of that. So also on the box, you get two bottles of the UV resin, obviously in a black bottle, because you brought this stuff outside, well, you'd never get it back. It would just turn into a brick. Now, what I plan on doing is I'm gonna paint brush it on to the bait, and then I'm gonna try something with the eyeball, and we'll see if that works. There, now I can have you guys on a high angle, which works a little better, I think. All right, I need a paintbrush. Good old Dollarama, I tell you. 
bait maker's dream. All right, so I got these little red shot glasses that I bought from Dollarama. I usually use them for mixing paint, but I can't see why they won't work for this. I don't need much of this shit. Probably just take it right out of the uh, container. Oh, hear a bunch of sirens. Hopefully everybody's okay. So that's one problem with this sun that's up right now is that um, I just realized it's activating the dirt, dirt daubers and they're trying to get out. I'm just going to pour a little bit of this into this cup. Pour some into this cup and onto the barbecue. And then grab the bait, put some on the brush, and we'll gently brush it on, making sure to fill that crack in. Now this is my first time ever using a product like this. So I honestly don't know how well this will turn out. I just see the amazing results he gets on his baits and I'm like, you know, I would like my baits to look like that. Now this stuff is supposed to dry clear. I hope it does. Ah, the joys of experimentation, eh? All right, so I got it all on there. I want to make sure I got no air bubbles in it. Now this stuff will stay wet until you hit it with some UV. So I'm just going to turn it for a bit. I'm going to step out that door and let the sun do what it's got to do. A few moments later. All right, she looks pretty sealed. She's not tacky to the touch. So I'm gonna hit it one more time with this chrome paint. But it did seal it enough. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. This is just the prototype. I'm probably, like I said, I'm gonna print off a bigger one and then give that a rip. This is just a prototype bait to play around with. So we'll wait for that to dry and we'll hit it again with the clear and see how well it works. Six hours later. Alrighty guys, while I was doing the waiting game there, I decided to uh, go to Independent. It's a grocery store. It's independently owned under a franchise name. I went there and got some food because uh, every weekend I like to do this where I go to Independent and they got a deal. It's like a bucket of chicken, but it's not like chicken. It's chicken wings. You get 30 pieces of wings. I think I'm right on that number. Anyway, this thing's finally dry. Lateral line didn't completely seal, but I really don't care at this point because half of the stuff I want isn't even here to put on it. But like I said, it's prototype. So I have these things here that I use for the eyeballs on that walleye slayer, the Mark One, I, I call it. And I'm going to stick one on this bait and just see how dumb it looks. Of course, it's not going to stick on the bait. Okay. What I might do then is I might use a paintbrush. Wow, that that resin's really good. It doesn't even cure until it's um until it sees sunlight, which is exactly what a UV resin should do. Now, this the main application for this guys is people make jewelry with it. Take a leaf and put it in UV and then cure it, and then you got this like you know. You know, these are just Dollarama things, by the way, in case you're wondering, you probably weren't, but I'm telling you anyway. Are these eyeballs way too big for that socket? Actually, no, that actually looks pretty good on there. I think I might just put two of those on, call it a flipping day. I'm gonna put a black dot on it. I don't know how bad that's gonna mess up the action because it's gonna have a really big eyeball sticking out of the side of its head like it's some sort of a pet fish from the pet store, but whatever. Okay, it looks like shit. I might just draw on a lateral line. Just drawing a little lateral line. Maybe I'll paint the top of it black too. Your airbrush doesn't work. A hand brush will. Is it gonna look Pantene Pro? Hard no, but it should give me the flippy flappy flash that I'm looking for in the water. Now what we'll do is I'm gonna coat it in another coat of the UV resin. Then we're gonna sit it outside and let it fester for a bit and harden up. And then maybe give her a test launch. Now, something I've seen uh, Marling do with his UV resin is he'll actually put uh, small, like micro almost, flake in it, like sparklers, or not sparklers, but um, oh, what do you call that shit? Glitter. There's the word. He'll put like some glitter in it and then use that to uh, give it a little bit more luster in the water so the sun catches it and it has a lot more shine to it. I, however, don't have any glitter for, oh man. Well, you saw it here if you haven't seen that previous video. Doesn't matter what your bait looks like as long as it's flippy flapping. And I caught a walleye with it, not a bass. I think I said a bass on my previous uh, talk about that. Oh man, what am I derping? Yeah, okay, well he's a derpy little fish, that's for sure. It might cause the bass to eat it just out of pity. Definitely not a professional job. But I never called myself a professional bait maker. I'm just starting off with this fun little hobby of printing and sending it. So I'm going to bring this outside, let it sit on top of the uh, fire pit. And then 
it should get enough so oh, no it won't where can i i might be able to just put it right in the window there or just put it on the window here so yeah just let the sun hit it should cure it all up definitely a derpy little thing eh not a mirror finish if you want to do a mirror finish they sell foil tape that you can get and then you just cut it out to the dimensions of your uh lure wrap it hit it with a hair blower to shrink it and then it comes out looking pretty damn sexy this was just me using what i have in the garage to give it a paint job a real bad one at that but whatever if there's fish out there they should eat it so i'm just going to leave that in the sun let it do its thing and we'll come and check on it in like 20 minutes or so and then make a decision on what we're going to do if we're going to go fishing today because as you can see the weather has definitely changed what the heck yeah the weather has definitely changed it's actually nice out I'm hoping it's like this next weekend bloke says it should be it's supposed to rain all week down there and then we should be good for the weekend so i guess we'll wait and see but as far as needing more baits i don't really need more baits i got a bunch of shit that i can use and bloke's got a bunch of shit he can use and plus we have those two better bass boxes which confirmed both have the same stuff in it but you've already seen that video so i don't know why i'm talking about it this is the problem when you're filming in the past for the future about an event that already happened that you do not know the current outcome of you have the plan for how you're going to shoot the video but you don't quite know what happened during said plan like i don't even know what baits are in that better bass box it could be complete potato we don't know anyway I'm gonna carry on with um, editing, wait for that thing to cure, and then we'll decide if we're gonna go fishing. Maybe go for the walleye bite tonight. See if we can rinse and repeat what we did the other year with the Mark I, and go from there. 20 minutes later. Alrighty guys, there we have it. She's all painted, hooks are on it. The eyeballs are attached. They call those eyeballs. I don't know, I think the next step is to test it out. And I only know of one place where to test it out. Well. I know of another place, but I really don't want to go there. That's where I normally go is the wall. The reason why I don't want to go there is because the bite has been completely awful. Now I was thinking the government dock, it's been pretty awful too. And I don't feel like going up for the walleye bite tonight because I kind of want to play rust. I don't feel like spending all night fishing, which is weird for me to say. So I'm going to tie this thing on to the brand new Daiwa and uh, we're going to take it out and see how she do. All right, I'm going to jump in the truck, head down 63 and see if we can find some place to throw this bait around. Let's go. Alrighty guys, so this dock is uh, kind of sketch. It's a floating dock, but I had a couple friends who said that this is a good spot to come fish and it's literally around the corner from my house. Figured I'd give her a go. I just want to see if this bait has any action in the water first. Barely. I don't even know if you guys can see that down there. It shimmers side to side. All right, castability. Recalibrate for the weight, should be good. You know what, I'm just gonna sail it out over here and let that shit hawk do his thing. See if there's any bass trolling around here, I doubt it, but you never know. Now normally with these types of ripping rip wraps, you get some some decent action off of them but i ain't feeling shit from the uh from the lure so i'm wondering if those big eyeballs i put on it are causing a bit of a problem and i'm willing to bet the answer is yes well, i guess it's back to the drawing table for this bait like i said the big eyeballs could be causing a bit of a, a technicality so i'm gonna probably try a print without any eyeball like without the uh, maybe i'll deepen the sockets even but i do gotta say i like this combo this rod is really nice be really nice if a fish ate but yeah with a crankbait you really feel that side to side flutter in the rod with this thing here it's just pulling straight and i have a feeling it's because of those ginormous eyeballs i stuck on the front of it i'm gonna go on the end of the dock and sail it straight out now that that seagull's gone just to see there's apparently structure out here and you can see the eddies from it and the bass like to camp that structure so I figure oh yeah this this new rod is amazing but there is zero shimmy shimmy coming off that lure right now yeah seriously guys if you're looking to get your first bait cast for a rod and you don't want to break the bank check out these Daiwa arid it's a i r d dash x they're cheap 
they're very affordable. They're Daiwa, so they're a name brand. They have some features built into them. They got some like carbon weave and you can sort of see it in the rod itself. Gives them more durability. Should have brought my fishing glasses so I could see through the water better. I'm honestly not expecting to catch a fish here. The lakes have been pretty much wicked since we had that snowstorm, uh, snowstorm, since we had that snow on the 7th with all the seaweed dying off. Cause normally I was told this is a pretty weedy area. Oh, this thing almost wants to friggin' swim like a jerk bait. I wonder if I peel the eyeballs off of this thing, if it'll make a difference. Oh, I can't peel the eyeballs off. They're on there for life. Okay. All right. Well, never mind that. I was going to try breaking off the eyeballs, but that uh, UV resin, let me tell you, when it hardens, it's stone. So I don't know how well you guys can see that down there. But it's not swimming. Well, I got a piece of seaweed stuck on my line. It's not swimming completely right. Like it'll do a full reverse and then it goes on its side. And I'm not sure why it's behaving like that. I probably have the hook too far back or the hook, the um, line tie. Probably fix the action by just putting on a, um, a split ring, but oh, that's neat. When I vertical jig it, it's different. I feel the vibration in the rod when I vertical jig it. We know that those big eyeballs are bad for it. So that was basically all I wanted to test was to see how well this thing would perform. And we know that it doesn't. <laughs> like I say, guys, all part of prototyping. Apparently I got my drag set super loose. What the hell's going on? I can't set the drag on this rail. Am I missing something here? Is there like an anti-reverse that I forgot to turn off? Yeah, the drag is not setting. Well, that's a bit of an issue. All right. Well, apparently we got some problems with the reel. Good to know. Anyway, let's get out of here. So this is what I don't get is I had drag yesterday when I went down to Armstrong because I hooked on to that one bass with the whopper plopper and it worked fine. But right now, if I take this star wheel and I turn it over as hard as I can, I shouldn't be able to do that. The thing is that I can loosen off the drag all the way. Now it's all the way off and it pulls the same consistency. Like there's the same amount of resistance coming off of it. And I shouldn't be able to do this. Is there something I'm missing on this reel? Does it have some sort of a reverse lockout that I forgot to turn on? I don't see any switches anywhere. All right, I'm gonna bring it in the house and reference the manual. I think I know what the problem is. We'll bring it in the house, reference the manual, get it all figured out and go from there. As for this bait, super cute, but it needs more revisions. And that's what I plan on doing. I don't know, whenever. Not that I need any more baits, like I said. We got plenty, you know, like this whole top drawer of the filing cabinet is full. There's a whole bunch in there. There's a whole bunch up here. My tackle bag is full. The kayak bag is full. I got baits coming out my arse, but I'm going to get this thing straightened out. It's going to hit with a raindrop. Freaking blue skies. Out. We'll get this here all figured out and ready to rock because I have a feeling I know where I went wrong. And otherwise I'll go to Canadian Tire tomorrow and exchange it for the other one they have. Anyway, guys, so there you go. From print to paint to catch. Did it work? No. Will it work? After a few modifications here and there, anything is possible. All right, speed bump. You got to get out of the way. Freaking meow face. Always in the way. Anyway, guys, I'm going to shut her down there. Like I said, I want to play some rust tonight. And now I got a real operation ahead of me. So I'll deal with that. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. Uh, if you have any ideas for baits that I should make, let me know and I'll see if I can pull it off. All right, stay tuned, peace out, and thanks for watching. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.